Okay, here's how to parry in Mortal Shell. First up, I should preface this by saying this is the way it works in the beta. When the full game is finally released, it might get changed, I don't know. If it does, I hope it only gets tweaked just a little, because the parry system is super rewarding when you actually get good at it. But, it is the getting good at it part that's tough, so let's get into that now. At the start of the game, you get awarded the Tarnished Seal. This is the item that actually enables you to parry. The parry button is the left button on a controller or F on keyboard if you weren't sure. The tarnished seal sits on your lower back. Keep it in your peripheral vision always. It will let you know when an incoming attack can't be parried by glowing or flashing a reddish orange color just before the attack is made by the enemy. If it glows or flashes, get ready to dodge or use harden, but don't try to parry. If the seal doesn't glow, that doesn't necessarily mean you should try to parry the next attack. Many attacks can be parried, but some are way easier than others to the point that it's really too risky to try to parry everything, even if the Tarnished Seal isn't glowing. The Tarnished Seal merely tells you which attacks are so powerful that you shouldn't even try. Attacks that are easier to parry start out super telegraphed. You'll nearly always see the enemy wind up for the shot. I say nearly because some attacks that are easily parried also happen differently, such as when an enemy leaps forward, but try to think of that, like the distance that they have to leap, as the same as the telegraphed part of an attack such as the distance they are jumping is equivalent to the wind-up if they weren't. The telegraph part I'm referring to, or the wind-up, is when an enemy pulls their sword back, or raises their axe over their shoulder, or coils up for a big powerful swing, that sort of thing. For example, this enemy pulls back their sword. You can see here the boss coils up, ready to do a big swing. This guy kind of turns away, building up power, but then does he swing? Or, the same guy can raise his weapon up high, but that's still an obvious enough telegraphed movement. In nearly all of these cases, when an enemy shows you the attack is coming, there will be a pause at the peak of the telegraphing. The enemy will hold their weapon for a fraction of a millisecond at the point where they've raised their sword the highest, lifted their axe back the furthest, and so on. It is usually precisely as this pause ends that the parry window is active. So that's the simple explanation for how to spot when the type of attacks that are the easiest to parry are about to come your way. And while absolutely fundamental, that's the easy part. The hard part is, after you've spotted the telegraphed movement and the pause at the peak, is getting the timing right for when to push your parry button. Here's the thing. Mortal Shell has a variety of enemies. These enemies carry different types of weapons, and each enemy has a variety of attacks they can do with those weapons, and a variety of different distances from which they can do them. Most enemies have one or two attacks that can be more easily parried than their other attacks too. And then there's the issue of some attacks being faster than others, some being slower, some having different pause lengths at the peak of their telegraph movements, and of course a lot of different weapons can be swung at you from a lot of different trajectories. And that's a lot of variation that you have to deal with. To learn how to effectively parry them all, you have to get some experience attempting to parry them all. There's really no way around that. You'll have to practice to get your eye in and to develop a little muscle memory for each different enemy attack type. There simply isn't a press the button here rule that applies to every possible attack that can come your way. There's no parry spamming in this game. You can't rapid tap the block button like you did in Sekiro. Do that and you're dead in Mortal Shell. But while you're practicing, if you keep in mind only to practice parrying heavily telegraphed attacks, then getting good at it becomes a lot easier. That's because all telegraphed attacks have a commonality. There will always be the slow build up before the attack, and there will always be a peak point at the end of that build up. Those two things are the things you need to take most notice of in all cases and regardless of the enemy or its attack. If you struggle with that, there are some enemies where you can kind of watch their opposing arm to time your parry. When they pull back ready for their swing, watch their other arm and as soon as you see that move, you can press the parry button. Now you can't do that trick on all types of attacks, but I think a lot of people might find doing that slightly more consistent to begin with. 
Unfortunately, it might make other parable attacks harder to spot because your muscle memory won't be tuned to the thing it should be, but you have to start somewhere, I guess. So if you're really struggling, start with watching the opposing arm and go from there. Regarding the peak point of the telegraph, most enemies will pause momentarily when they reach it. Sometimes it will be a very noticeable pause, other times it will be less than a fraction of a millisecond, and other times it will seem so fast that it's not even there at all. But still, you should always look for it. Treat that as the main thing to look for because if you spot the pause, you'll know as soon as it ends, that's the time to hit parry. You want to attempt to time your button press to match the point between the precise end of the pause and the precise start of the enemy's attack swing. That won't work all the time, but it's the baseline to start from. Then with each new enemy attack type that you have to practice on, just shift the pressing of your parry button either slightly earlier or slightly later than that pause and see what happens. One of them will definitely work. Once you know which one it is that works, whether you have to press the parry button later or earlier on each enemy attack type, you just have to memorize that. It really doesn't take long, but you will need a few practice goes before you start nailing it nine times out of 10. Know that the game gives a few frames leeway either way of that pause too. So sometimes pressing the button at the end of the pause will work. Sometimes pressing it a nanosecond after the enemy starts its attack swing will work. More often than not, it's right as the pause ends and the swing begins, but you will have to experiment as you play the game to find what works. Here are some examples. This boss has a big lumbering swing with a huge arc that takes a little longer to reach you. It's got to cover a bit of distance. And so pressing your parry button slightly after his build up and pause ends is the right time. Always take note of your position. If you're a little further away, you'll want to delay your press by just a little bit. If you are right up in the enemy's face, you can pretty much time it right as the pause ends without a problem. Compare that last one to this one. Here we have a short and fast swing that doesn't need to cover much distance, and so the game will give very little leeway after the attack starts, but a little more closer to the pause itself. So you can even press it during the pause if you nail it just before the pause ends. In most cases, all you need to learn is how much they telegraph their move, how long they typically pause at the peak of it, and how quickly their attack comes once they finally swing. Once you learn that, you'll find you can parry a specific opponent's parryable attacks most of the time because the parrying mechanic itself really isn't as inconsistent as it first appears. It's just really hard to do. But I can confirm with a bit of practice, you can parry nearly 100% of the time. If I miss a parry now, I nearly always get the second one. And I don't miss often anymore. So I can definitely say the mechanic actually works. Otherwise you just couldn't get to a point where you can parry nearly 100% of the time. You really just have to learn it. I see parrying in Mortal Shell as a bit of a mirror of what parrying is like in real life. You learn how to parry with principles and sound technique, but the actual timing of your technique will always vary depending on the nature of the attack you're facing, which is always different as there are always many different variables to consider. In Mortal Shell, the mechanic has a base principle that is easy to learn. The technique doesn't change, but the timing shifts according to the slight variations in enemy attacks that can come your way. But as you get better at it, you begin to realize it never shifts too much. It's only ever a small subtle shift forward or back, and it doesn't take long to work out where that timing is per enemy once you get to know them. It's fucking brilliant game design to be honest, not only because the mechanic is rewarding once you learn to do it well, but also because parrying can heal you. That thin segmented line that you see just above your health bar, that's your resolve meter. If a single segment is full of resolve and you parry correctly, the game will give you a follow-up strike that looks a lot like the Sekiro Deathblow icon. And it's just as cool as that too. But striking at that point will gain you a bunch of health back. It will take away the resolve from the segment, but you'll basically transfer it out for health. If the bars are empty though, a single parry will fill one of those resolve bars, making your next parry a guaranteed chance to heal. And the healing is a significant chunk of your maximum health. The game has a variety of ways to heal, but none are as effective as parrying. If you get good at parrying, you'll be healing constantly. It's such a great risk versus reward combat system that, along with the harder mechanic, fully promotes aggressive gameplay, and I love it. That said, I know a lot of people are and will struggle with parrying in Mortal Shell. It's going to be rage inducing for many, if not most. There's even an argument for relaxing the window, or for maybe giving a visual cue to where the parry should be executed, such as, I don't know, a quick bright glint on the tarnished seal or something. 
But be that as it may, the parry system is still effective as it is once you learn it. You just need to take the time to practice. You likely won't make it 100% consistent, but you can get it to eight or nine times out of 10 for sure. And when you do get it to that point, it's so damn rewarding and awesome to parry your way through enemies. It's just great. Anyway, with that said, I'll stop talking now and I'll close out this video with a boss fight where I pretty much only attack after parrying for the whole fight, so you can kind of see, even against bosses, this shit works. I'm Fuzzy Barbarian, thanks for watching, and enjoy.